That's the sound of the film. Listen, I just tuned this bass drum yesterday. Listen to it, listen. Does it pick it up? It's like whoosh, whoosh, through the vent hole. Hang on, hang on. Anyway, so here we are. This is a Bonzolium story. It's still really cold down here because the cold wave hasn't let up. But here's a story. People have asked about stories. It's amazing. My stories are in demand. I'm actually going to write a book. It'll be, what, what if I wrote like a book, Bonzolium short stories, like the 39 stories I'm in the process of telling? God, man, what if that sold? Like, what if I was like, ha, an author? Be like, so check this out 1985 back in 1985 god i was a kid man i was 16 in 1985 to a lot of younger people that might be pretty cool or not but so 1985 the summer of none of us were driving except my friend steve who's a little older than us you know month wise so his folks had a car that they had bought steve's older brother when he went off to school out east Steve's brother went out east. God love him. Uh, they sent him off with a with a station wagon, like a Caprice station wagon or something, that had um, it sort of looked like the uh, vacation, like the Chevy Chase National Lampoon Vacation station wagon, except that one in the movie was outfitted almost as a prop, like they made it sort of look like a tank, like a Mercury. You know what I mean? Uh, but anyway, so th this car that my friend Steve had, you know, I to be honest. It did not have paneling. Now that I think about it, it did not. It was just sort of like a, um, it was a bizarrely sort of brownish, orangish, cream-colored station wagon that was all dented up. And it, I, if I'm not mistaken, I swear to God, I even think there was some spray paint graffiti on the back door of it, okay? So it was a four, a five-seater. You could put two, you know, driver, passenger, then three, but probably squeezing four. And actually, there might have been another fold-up seat. So it might have been, you know, a seven seater. So we go out one day, you know, we're decided to go to like White Hen Pantry when those existed, get Kit Kats, Hostess cupcakes, Pepsi, whatever sugar we could get our hands on. I was m still am Mr. Sugar. Did I bring down my coffee sugar? <laughs> um, so we get in the car, you know, and Steve's driving. And, you know, Steve was a really good driver, man. I'll tell you, my, I'm still friends with Steve. God love him. Doing very well now. Or he's earned it. God love him. But this freaking guy. We could be in the midst of all kinds of chaos. And even though he did say later, like, God, we almost died. Or like, he'd admit that he was scared to death and we almost died. You'd think it was like a Hollywood stunt driver. My dad had a friend named Art Schoen, who, who was an ex-Chicago cop, used to drive film. to the, Back in the day when news was filmed, my dad was in that business. They would take, like, the film just in. They'd rush it out real fast and he'd drive it back real fast to be developed to put on the news. Anyway, Steve sort of drive like that. Anyway, so we get in the car, the station wagon. Caprice Classic Station Wagon. I think it is. It's 1985. This is probably a 1983 car, believe it or not. It's not that old, but it's probably got 100,000 miles on it. It's all beat up. We get in the car. We you know, back out of his little space behind the house, and we go up the alley. We're heading north in the alley, and we get to a street called Pleasant, an Oak Park Street Pleasant. I always love Pleasant. Hmm. But, so uh, we turn left on Pleasant. We're heading westbound, okay? Soon as we get out of the, out of, onto the street and start going, it was kind of like, you know that movie with uh, Bruce Willis? He was on a train and the train just keeps unbreakable. You know how kind of scary that is where, you know, he's on the train and it's, it's almost like that, that's actually really effective. That director of that type, the guy who does that movie, that's a really effective, scary scene. When suddenly you realize it's going really fast and the train sounds and then, if you've never watched the movie, watch it. So suddenly we're in the car. And I, the thing I first noticed is that the engine... These cars had V8s, man. I mean, big cars these days have like V6s. You know what I mean? These had, this was like an original sort of 70s model sort of V8 engine that when you'd punch in, it would be like, like a, I mean, it was like an engine. You know what I mean? Well, an engine. Thank God there was some sort of suspension on the car for the torque, you know? So uh, we start hauling ass, and suddenly I realize I sort of look over at my, at my friend, Steve, who's in the car. Now, driving the car. Now, in the back are my friend Mike, probably Wolfie, Dan, and OB, okay? 
So we're just driving this car to the White Hen, 1985. Hopefully this doesn't turn out to be anticlimactic. But this is a true story, and this one stands out. So the car is going really, really fast and in streets, in a lot of older residential streets. The street is sort of graded like, like, a, like an upside down, like a frown, right? I mean, this is an exaggeration, but they are because they want you know, the moisture to flow off. Anyway, when those meet with another street that has the same sort of shape, <laughs> when you go through the intersection, your car, and you know this, you drive through, it kind of go like, your car kind of goes, like it sort of flowed for a minute. Like we had a bus, I went to a high school in Oak Park called Fenwick High School back in the day. And every time we drive back from an outdoor uh, gym class, we go over this particular intersection, which I think might have been like Harvard and East Avenue, no part, where literally some kids would hit their heads on the top of the bus. It's kind of, nowadays it would never happen. Anyway, so suddenly the, the engine is like, like that, like out of a movie, you know? And my friend Steve, who's driving, has, for whatever reason, two hands on the wheel, which I've never, ever seen Steve do. You know what I mean? Steve would drive literally like a New York bus driver, like a finger, <laughs> like around where the horn thing goes. He'd sort of be like, you know what I mean? He's, he was 10 and two, man. He was nine and three. So we keep going faster and faster. Meanwhile, the dudes in the back are like laughing about something, tell the story. I remember them not like getting it right away. Like I remember suddenly it seeming like we were about to T-bone somebody or be T-boned. <laughs> bad like it was a, a moment where you're like like I've driven down these streets in Oak Park before where we've gone the other way southbound or northbound do, going real fast and the driver with the, doesn't look either way like I'm thinking to myself like what if we hit another Steve mobile another we're gonna call this it, it's the battle wagon what if there's another battle wagon like another group of kids from a different part of town that are going to the white hand too and we meet at one of these intersections it would have been really really bad because in 1985 it was still the era where people like seatbelts were optional like some people, you'd see somebody strap in, you'd be like, Siri, it's just the way it was. Anyway, so we're flying, and we go over like the first intersection, Scoville maybe? What's that? Then, so then we get to the next one, and it didn't really go on that long. It actually seemed like it went on longer at the time. It was very frightening. Steve the driver then <laughs> literally goes down. Like I, I'm look, I mean, it was so bad that I think he really thought like, Forgot steering kind of to save our life. He needed to do what he had to do. <laughs> he literally went down. He was down under the dashboard with his hands <laughs> trying to de-stick the accelerator. I wasn't stuck with glue right. It was caught on something or something. And this car was beat up, man. It was the battle wagon. <laughs> and he's yanking on it. I swear to God. Guys in the back seat by this time have, have caught on. Wolfie and Danny and et al. And, you know, we're like screeching like, ah! I mean, it was bad, man. So what happens is I think I, I, I honestly am not going to lie to you and say I grabbed the wheel to try. I, by the grace of God, I think I just sat there, my mouth just tasting like a penny, like thinking to myself, like, like this could be it. And anyway, so Steve pops back up. He's not successful pulling. He, he might have pulled the pedal up, but what he also did too is he threw the car into neutral. It was easy to do, you know, the, the gear thing was on your right like this. Your turn signal was here and you changed the, Reverse neutral drive was over here. She threw it into neutral. And for some reason, I don't remember us actually slamming on the brakes, but the car kind of just goes. <laughs> I swear to God, this is so funny now that I think about it. Ah, the golden days. It was like this. This is the mount I'm going to put on my 10 by 14 uh, six log amber bislight tom. And it was like this. It was like over this intersection, over this intersection, then like that. We're like, we all got out of the car. And I'm not kidding. I think Steve also got out of the car while it was still rolling, maybe. In fact, I know that happened because it was in neutral. Like, we got out of the car like this. And meanwhile, the engine, even though it's in neutral, yeah, he didn't unstick the pedal because the engine's going, the engine's going. <laughs> so we stand there for a minute. And since we're all 16, 15 or 16, we're like, you know, Steve kind of gets in, he gets down on the floor, you know, fixes it. And within like 30 seconds, all of us, of course, like, oh my God, and we almost died. And then like, oh, let's get back in the car and go to Whitehead. So that's what happened. So that is Bonzolium's story, maybe 11 or 12, I forget. But you know, I realized these stories, man, they really happened. And they were, I mean, every, like I, you can talk to my, my dudes. If you talk to, well, one of them might not have been there. I forgot which one. But if you talk to Steve or Wolfie or Danny or OB, I think OB was there. 
OB was sometimes there for a lot of cool stuff, and then suddenly he wasn't there. He developed a different crew of friends early on in high school and defected. Um, anyway, but yeah, those were the days. So more videos on the way. I'll make some more Bonzolium stories. I have my new cable now. I can hook my iPad up to my board again now. Instead of an RCA cable that was crappy, I got a straight, I got an eighth inch to a quarter inch going in the board. We're all in biz. More covers on the way. More videos on the way. Please subscribe to my, to your right. Hit, just hit that button. Do me a solid, as the kids say, all the millennial. Think about it, man. I'm like a 48-year-old guy that has like, I got a YouTube channel. It's pretty freaking cool now that I think about it. Wow. I wish I bought Bitcoin five or six years ago. Now that I think about it. But anyway, um, more videos on the way. I'm going to play just a little bit real fast. Because my family's upstairs. They might get mad just for a second. So here we are. People have been asking about my symbols. This is a Zildjian S Series 20-inch Thin Crash. This is a Peisty Giant Beat Reissue. I still call them reissue, even though now they're, well, like 14 or 15 years old, but 20-inch multi. And then my trusty 20-inch Avita Zildjian French Symphonic. Here we go. My shoes on, I swear to God. My tux is at the cleaners. My seat's too high. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, there we go. Hang on. I'm trying to get some control. Anyway, there was another thing I was going to say, though. Um, oh, I did not get the 16 inch Amber Vista Light uh, Tom. It was on eBay, and just before, at the very last minute, I was going to bid on it because I wanted to try, I mean, physically, you might say snipe it, I guess, but I was just going to put a bid on it, like in the last 10 seconds. And for some reason, it said, like, with 15 seconds before it was done, it said, this item is no longer available. It was the weirdest thing. It was almost like it was pulled in the crucial last 15 seconds, so I ended up not getting that drum. So, again, more videos on the way, more drum covers and other stuff, too. Have a good weekend. Uh, stay warm. There, stay cool. Stay warm, but it's getting warm tomorrow, at least in the Midwest. So, thank you.